where are Africa's ancient treasures? Stolen, for the most part. It's a well-known fact that the Benin bronzes were looted by British soldiers more than a century ago and sold to collections around the world. A few have now been returned, others may follow. But what about the Mandu Yenu throne from Cameroon? Well, it's here in Berlin. King Njoya gifted the throne to the German Emperor Wilhelm II in 1908. But how freely was it given away? Then there are older examples of human heritage from Africa. This is the Kabwe skull, found in 1921 in what is today known as Zambia. It's more than a quarter of a million years old. Despite the requests from the Zambian government for its return, it's still in London. And then there's this, a single slender bone currently in a museum in Brussels, Belgium. The Shango bone, excavated in 1950, is believed to be the oldest ever example of human mathematics or its understanding of human mathematics. Some in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where it was found, insist the former colonial power Belgium should give it back. DW's Jack Parrock reports from the Belgian capital. Stored in a protective safe at the Museum of Natural Sciences in Brussels, the Ishango bone. Three columns of up to 60 notches on the bone divided into groups are believed to prove a mathematical understanding in early humans of 25,000 years ago. We have a group of notches, three notches and then six notches. Uh, after that we have four notches notches and then eight notches and and then ten and five so we have uh, <clears throat> um, uh, maybe uh, a knowledge of uh, a number and is double the 10 centimeter fossilized bone was found with the quartz stone used to make the notches an extremely rare find it was discovered by a Belgian geologist in 1950 on the shore of Lake Edward in Virunga National Park and brought back to Brussels. At that time, the country was under a brutal colonial rule responsible for the deaths of up to 10 million Congolese people. It was a statement made by the head of the DRC's Conservation Institute, which has shone the light on this specific item, the Ashango bone. The, the symbolism of the, the coming back of this bone in this place is so important for us. It's, uh, it symbolizes all the, the mission that we have today uh, to conserve the biodiversity and to conserve the, the, the nature for the, the well-being of humanity. So, <laughs> as you can guess, the importance of this little bone of 10 centimeters is tremendous for us. On display in the Brussels Museum is a replica of the Ashango bone. There's been no formal request by authorities in the Democratic Republic of Congo for the Ashango bone to be returned there yet. But there could be one, and it could be one of thousands of artefacts in museums like this one that might end up being returned to where they were found. The Belgian government has launched a wide-ranging consultation along with the government in the DRC to discuss the return of thousands of items stolen during colonial times. The exact number in the consultation is unknown. The state secretary here says the process must be done correctly. The entire philosophy of our approach is that we, want, we don't want to talk about any specific object because we want to put science at the core of the decision, is it legitimate to be in Belgium, then we can keep it, or is it illegitimate because the circumstances, historical circumstances are not good, it has been stolen and in that case it should be returned. Much like this 25 metre high statue of the Ashango bone outside the Brussels Museum, many in the Congolese community in Belgium believe the country needs to talk bigger and address financial reparations for the atrocities committed. Now, Belgium was one of many European powers that stole Africa's heritage. Across the continent, colonialists took what they wanted with impunity, often by force over the centuries. TW News Africa's Tommy Alodipo met with a Kenyan activist who wants to find her heritage. 
Now, my next guest has been finding out what was stolen from her country, Kenya. Let's welcome Dr. Njokin Gumi to DW News. Njokin, it's good to have you on the program. Now, you're active in The Nest, which is an artist collective, and uh, the International Inventories Program. These are all working together with the National Museums of Kenya. Can you tell us about this project and, and what you found out? Um, I think, first of all, to kind of riff of what you said, my my heart, of course, is with the people of uh, the, the people whose whose objects were taken um, and who have to find out about them in these deeply deeply distressing, um, horrifying stories. Um, with regard to our work with IIP and the International Inventories Project, it's been really exciting to be able to work so closely um, with the National Museum, which can look from afar like a very kind of imposing institution, um, and the museum um, in the course of our working together. Has has grown an interest in um, getting back um, some specific objects, especially objects that have been deemed objects of national importance, and also kind of wanting to have custodianship of a database of objects um, that we have um, crowdsourced. And a lot of museums in Germany and in other countries have contributed to, to say these are the Kenyan objects that we have um, in our archives. Object ownership is something that's very complex and layered beyond even um, all of the old and very boring um, and, of course, untrue um, claims that Africans don't have capacity to keep their objects, objects that were made here for use here, which, of course, we have capacity to do. Um, and, of course, noting that um, many of these objects are not even represented properly um, in the archives that they're in, um, in some of these museums abroad. They are given different names, they're attributed to different ethnic groups, and they actually belong to um, beyond, of course, some of them having left in very dubious and criminal circumstances. So, so is the aim actually to, to return these items, particularly the, the ones from Kenya, back home? So that's a really good question. I think um, for the for, for our partners, the National Museums of Kenya, they have interest in very, very specific objects, some which have been called objects of national importance. Um, and a few of them um, have been identified and are in the UK. One of them, um, whose whereabouts are unknown, are the human remains. Um, and of course, referring to him as an object, um, of, of, of course, is, is very is very problematic because the human remains are not objects in that sense. But the human remains of Kwaitalel Arab Samway, who was um, a spiritual leader who was very, very important to one Kenyan ethnic group, um, the Kalenjin people. Um, another object, of course, is um, the Ngaji, which is a drum of the Pokomo people, which they used to communicate uh, with those who had gone before them um, and to have kind of rituals and things around. With regard to some of the objects, um, of course, it's very important to start building ethical relationships around them. And I think this is possible. A lot of very... Um, uh, progressive museums have begun doing this. It's like, how can we, um, first of all, have the truth with regard to the provenance of this object uh, known? So how can people know this is exactly where um, some of these objects came from? Do these objects have the right names? Have, have they been represented properly? Are there ways in which um, the ownership of these objects can be more reflective of where they came from? Is it possible to see, especially with objects that were taken um, in gruesome circumstances, and some of these objects are known, can those objects return? And the others, can there be kind of constructive and, and, and helpful dialogue towards um, building a much, more, a much more equitable cultural relationship around these objects? Uh, you talk about the, 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 the circumstances around these artifacts, but there are other yes. issues related, you know, uh, uh, intangible uh, heritage that has been mm. lost as well. Um, are those lost forever? I think that's a really good question. Um, the, the conversation around the objects is just the beginning. Um, it's not just cultural objects that were taken. And for us, um, objects have been made a focal point to distract from so much else. One thing, um, especially that Africans would like to get a hold of, is the colonial document archive. Um, each and every single, um, each and every single colonial co colonial entity um, in Africa was was very intentional about documenting everything they did, everything that was taken, uh, people who were killed and all of that. And a large number of people were able to destroy a number of these documents, of course, because they knew they would be incriminating if they were ever found uh, by the countries where they were, where these atrocities were committed. But some of these, um, some of these documents still exist um, and are there.
So getting a hold of some of those things on top of and including objects, um, I think would be the beginning of a, of, a, of a true possibility of something that's a little bit more equitable, that acknowledges um, how much damage the power dynamic has done, um, that disfavors and, and dis disadvantages Africa mm. and kind of puts the global north in a higher position. Um, it, I, think it, I think it does behoove me to say that um, the IAP project um, has been supported by, um, by, by, by Germany and partners, and, and that Germany in particular have been very, very progressive, even though, of course, a lot more can and should be done. But Germany have been very, very progressive about facing um, these very, very difficult questions. Mm, quite a lot of work uh, to be done, as, as you put to us. Uh, Dr. Njokin Gumi from the Nest Collective in Nairobi. Many thanks for speaking to us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and looking forward to continuing this important, important conversation. And this Congolese activist decided to take matters into his own hands by storming museums in Europe to steal some of these items back. Take a look. Many would call this theft, but this activist says he's only getting back what was taken away from his people. I came to reclaim goods that were stolen from Africa during colonialization. This video was live-streamed on Facebook back in June, when Wasulu Diabianza and four other activists were trying to steal a funerary post from Cabrini Museum in Paris. He failed, but managed to draw attention to a topic that has recently triggered a heated debate. Should African art looted during colonialism be returned? And if so, how and when? The Congolese-born activist says action is needed now. You never ask a thief for permission to get back what he stole from you. That's what we did. We have the right to defend ourselves because we were robbed. The fact that our works are on display here means the theft continues. Diabianza also caused a stir when he tried to steal a piece of art from a Dutch museum, as well as in the French city of Marseille. Some say these acts have to be considered as performances, not as theft. It's a different way of saying things that have already been said in many forms for a long time, since African countries gained independence on a diplomatic level in a dialogue between museums in international cooperation. For Diabanza and his fellow activists, it's not only about bringing heritage back home, as he calls it, he also wants European societies to face the realities of their colonial past. Now, a report by France found that up to 90% of African artworks are held outside of the continent. The man who's trying to get them back, you saw him in that report, is activist Mazulu Diabanza. Uh, Tommy Aladupo asked him if he had achieved what he wanted. Yes, our goal was to win over international public opinion, which we've done. Our second objective was to spark a debate, and the debate has been sparked. We've succeeded in putting the issue of restitution back on the international media and political agenda. I've just returned from Kinshasa, where there was an international symposium of scientists on this issue. Many governments and many associations are mobilized around this issue, and that's how we're going to move forward. We believe that our main objectives have been achieved. Mm. There have been some cases of restitution uh, where, where some of these artworks are actually being moved back. Uh, are you hopeful that everything that was stolen and placed on display in Europe will be returned? This is a core of our struggle. All that's been taken from us, all that's been looted and stolen, everything that's been the target of illicit trade and trafficking must go back to Africa. These first restitutions are proof that we've made progress since our action of so-called active diplomacy on June 12, 2020, at the Kai Branly Museum and then again in several other European museums. We're convinced that our chosen method, the mechanisms that we're putting in place, and the road of return we're busy building, that will result in the return of everything. Uh, you've been prosecuted for your actions. Did the European courts find you guilty, and if so, what was your punishment? 
I was convicted in Paris, but in Marseille, we were acquitted on the first count, and in the Netherlands, convicted on the second count. These are just dissuasive measures because all the judges unanimously recognize the political character of this act. Obviously, they also recognize the absence of any characteristics of theft, that's to say, any intention from us to possess these objects ourselves. They understood, of course, that they could not judge this act because then they would also have to judge the crimes committed against the African people during the slave raids, during slavery, during colonization, during neocolonialism. So a trial on this issue may be untenable. The courts are just trying to prevent me from doing what I'm doing and encouraging others to join in with me. We're continuing our work despite these convictions, which seem unjust. And we've appealed almost all of these convictions. Okay. Now, you've said that the theft of these artifacts uh, stole Africa's spirit and identity. So what would their return mean for the continent? It's the reconciliation, first of all, with ourselves, the reconciliation with our past, and the reconciliation with our history and with our ancestors. Many people, when they saw me do this, I take the example of my brothers who are in Suriname, they saw in this act the return of all the deportees to our motherland, Africa. That's to say that the recovery of what was stolen from us. And I continue to believe that the restitution of this looted African heritage, locked up in different museums, will allow Africa to rebuild its cultural edifice, the house of African culture that was destroyed, and will allow us to repair the backbone of our identity and our cultural roots, allowing us to stand upright once again. Okay. Mazulu Diabanza, many thanks for speaking to us.